Sinaloa was plunged into chaos on Thursday morning, January 5, 2023, as gunfire and explosions rocked the state, causing airports, highways, schools, and offices to come to a standstill. The military had descended on a house with one man in mind, Ovidio Guzman, one of the sons of the notorious drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. So, who is Ovidio Guzman, and why is he so important? Welcome to Crime Sight, home to all the latest news in the criminal underworld. Today, we're covering the story of the one person everyone's talking about, the infamous Ovidio Guzman. Before we begin, we would like to give a trigger warning, as some of the content of this video involves details of murder and violence. Who is Ovidio? Born in 1990, Ovidio Guzman Lopez is also known by his nicknames El Bebe, which means the baby, and El Raton, or the mouse. He is the son of the infamous drug lord El Chapo of the Sinaloa cartel. Having such a powerful father figure, Ovidio Guzman may have grown up in luxury, but his roots in the Sinaloa cartel were firmly planted from a young age. Despite being raised in the upscale Jardines del Pedregal district of Mexico City, Ovidio was no stranger to the criminal underworld that his family presided over. Along with his older brother Joaquin, he was already a member of the Sinaloa cartel at the tender age of 18, at the behest of his father. Ovidio's half-brothers Ivan and Jesus, the children of El Chapo's first wife Alejandrina Hernandez, were also involved in the cartel, and the trio was infamously referred to as Los Chapitos. In the shadowy world of drug trafficking, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was not just an ordinary member of the notorious Sinaloa cartel, he was a key lieutenant of his father, the infamous El Chapo. His reputation as a powerful figure in the cartel was further cemented when the U.S. Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control designated him as such in 2012, under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act. Following his father's arrest in 2016, Guzman Lopez is widely believed to have taken on an even more prominent role in the Sinaloa cartel. In fact, a 2019 report by the Associated Press suggests that he now leads the cartel, along with his three brothers. His criminal record Ovidio's power within the Sinaloa cartel is amplified by the fact that he is the son of El Chapo, a figure revered by many in the criminal underworld for his cunning and audacity. As a result, Ovidio has access to vast resources, connections, and networks of influence, making him a formidable figure in the world of international organized crime. But although the cartel always protected Ovidio, his criminal activities did not go unnoticed by law enforcement. In 2017, Ovidio and his brother Joaquin were indicted by a grand jury on charges related to trafficking drugs since 2008. The indictment remained sealed until it was unsealed in December 2018 for the limited purpose of an extradition proceeding. Finally, in February 2019, the indictment was fully unsealed by Judge Rudolf Contreras. For years, the United States has tried to extradite Guzman. In December 2021, the U.S. State Department offered a reward of $5 million for information leading to his arrest or conviction, as well as for each Chapitos. Guzman faces charges in the U.S. for conspiring to traffic cocaine, methamphetamine, and marijuana into the country. According to the State Department, he's responsible for methamphetamine labs in Sinaloa that produce between three to 5,000 pounds of the drug each month. His 2019 Capture and Release in a dramatic turn of events, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was arrested by members of the National Guard in Culiacan, Sinaloa on October 17, 2019, sparking a series of intense gun battles in the city. The situation quickly escalated when heavily armed cartel gunmen, reportedly numbering over 700, threatened to cause mass civilian casualties, including an attack on the apartment complex where the relatives of local military personnel were housed. Despite his arrest, Ovidio Guzman was released hours later after President Andres supported the decision to prevent further bloodshed. This was his sheer power taking effect. The incident's aftermath was no less violent, with one of the officers involved in the arrest, Eduardo N., assassinated the following month. The Mexican government continued to crack down on Ovidio's activities, with Santiago Nieto, head of the country's financial intelligence unit, announcing in May 2020 that they had frozen his assets and those of 330 individuals associated with the cartel. Nieto also revealed that they had discovered irregularities and had filed a complaint with the prosecutor's office. It seemed that wasn't the end for Ovidio Guzman, 
who continued to uphold his father's legacy, but his time was yet to come. The El Chapo family seems to be in hot water lately. If you'd like to know more about them, subscribe to our channel. The violence continued in 2023. On January 5th, 2023, Ovidio was sought out once again in Jesus Maria district of Culiacan. He was followed by a joint operation involving the Army, National Guard, Secretariat of National Defense, and Secretariat of the Navy. The power and influence of drug cartels in Mexico was again on display during the operation to arrest Ovidio. The cartel quickly mobilized hundreds of heavily armed gunmen in minutes, effectively paralyzing the city of Culiacan. In response, the highest level of travel advisory cautioning against travel to Sinaloa was reiterated. The governor of Sinaloa urged the public to stay indoors. As a result of the unrest, Culiacan International Airport was shut down and Aeromexico and military planes were fired upon. Shootouts also occurred on the runway, looting was reported in Culiacan, and many businesses and banks closed temporarily. Multiple carjackings and demands for car keys were also reported. During the unrest, 10 soldiers, 19 gang members, and one police officer were killed, including an infantry colonel and his four escorts, who were ambushed and killed by cartel members. A Secretariat of National Defense issued report revealed that 3,586 soldiers were used in the operation, and numerous weapons and operational vehicles were seized. All affected airports resumed regular services the following day after Ovidio was captured. Captured at long last. The authorities successfully transported him to Mexico City, where he was then taken to the offices of the Attorney General's Organized Crime Special Prosecutor. The Air Force later flew Guzman Lopez to the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, a maximum security federal prison in Almaloya de Juarez. His arrest was confirmed by Defense Secretary Luis Crescencio Sandoval, who revealed that 17 suspected cartel members were also taken into custody in the operation. Foreign Secretary Marcelo Ebrard confirmed an extradition request for Guzman Lopez to face trial in the United States but Ibrard noted that he was also facing criminal charges in Mexico. Following his arrest, a federal judge ordered Guzman Lopez to be placed under 60-day preventive detention to allow U.S. authorities to petition for his extradition formally. It is rumored that such an extradition has been requested by the U.S., but the timing of Ovidio Guzman's arrest and the fact that his father, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, is currently imprisoned in the United States was noteworthy as it coincided with President Biden's visit to Mexico City for talks with Mexican leaders. Ovidio's capture means that both father and son are now in different prisons, El Chapo at the Supermax in Colorado and Ovidio at the same Mexican prison from which his father famously escaped on a motorcycle in 2015. Three of the Guzman brothers remain at large, with authorities stating that they continue to run the Sinaloa cartel's day-to-day -day operations. The botched arrest of Guzman in October 2019 was a major embarrassment for the Mexican government and highlighted the difficulties in confronting and dismantling the drug cartels that hold significant power and influence in the country. The events of that day underscored the extent of the challenges Mexico faced in combating organized crime and ensuring public safety. The government was more prepared for the cartel's aggression during the 2023 arrest than in 2019 and was able to crack down with much greater force for the second time. And Ovidio was finally apprehended, bringing an end to his reign of terror, for now at least. The question exists in the minds of many Mexicans today. Is it better to leave cartel members alone to prevent needless bloodshed and unrest? Many do not agree with this logic of the government. Subscribe to Crime Site for further updates on the arrest, and click the video on the right for another great Mafia video.